The 3D Mario series is the most iconic video game series of all time. Nothing even comes close when it comes to innovation and prestige. So today, let's take a look at the top 100 facts from the 3D Mario series. In the original concept for Mario 64, there was going to be over 40 plus levels, just like the old 2D Mario games. But with data constraints, they ended up going for more exploration based levels, and basically invented the sandbox collectathon. If you punch butterflies, they will sometimes turn into bombs. Mario 64 was the first game in which Charles Martinet was the voice actor for Mario. The skybox for Wet Dry World is actually the photograph of Shabam Yemen, with the exception of the red building in the background. The red building is a mosque in Cairo, Egypt. In the summer of 2020, a source code leak of many old Nintendo games, including Mario 64, was found. In it was discovered that a prototype version of Luigi was at one point in development for the game, but in the end, it was scrapped due to hardware limitations at the time. The famous backwards long jump glitch that allowed players to skip large portions of the game was actually patched out way back in 1997 in the Shindu release of the game. With it also came other changes like this title screen easter egg, texture changes, and voice line changes. The wing cap theme is actually the track Powerful Infant from Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. The original track's tempo is a bit slower. You know how you can use both the metal and vanish cap in Dire Dire Docks? Well, in the files for the game, there was actually a texture for a metal wing, supposedly for use when the wing cap and the metal cap were both worn at the same time. It is impossible to obtain both of them at the same time in the game, but if a hacking device is used, it is possible to wear both the wing cap and metal cap. MIPS the Rabbit's name is an homage to the processor used in the N64, microprocessor without interlocked pipeline stages. The sound effect the baby penguin makes is actually a car lock noise. After 100%ing the game, if you use the now unlocked cannon in the courtyard and fly up to the roof of the castle, you'll actually find Yoshi there. If you talk to him, he'll give you 100 lives and a special triple jump. Super Mario Sunshine is the only fully voiced Mario game, with full on cutscenes and everything. What's this icky paint like goop? It's moving! Many of the names of the levels in Mario Sunshine are actually Italian, like Gelato Beach, Rico Harbor, and Pianta Village. Isle Delfino is a literal Italian translation of Dolphin Island, which seems to be a reference to the GameCube's codename, Dolphin. Serena Beach is actually in the shape of a GameCube controller. There's a remix of the Noki Bay theme which was supposed to be used when riding a Yoshi. However, Yoshi never makes an appearance in Noki Bay, which leads many to believe that at one point in development, Yoshi was actually supposed to be used in Noki Bay. In the 2001 Space World trailer for Super Mario Sunshine, a human NPC was present and was either planned to be in the game or was used as a placeholder. Either way, I'm definitely glad they got rid of them and used Piantas instead. Il Piantismo is actually the postman from The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Flood and Bowser Jr.'s brush are actually inventions by Professor Egad from the Luigi's Mansion games. In the cutscene at the beginning of the game when you meet Flood, in this one specific shot, there are many easter eggs. In one of them, you can see in the bottom left corner many highlights from Mario's career, such as his fights against Bowser in Super Mario Bros, World, and 64. When you lose a life, Mario will sometimes say, Avadovici, which means goodbye in Italian. Oh, I'm so sorry if I butchered that. <laughs> It's rumored that Super Mario Sunshine is actually the game that inspired Nintendo developers to make Splatoon. The Super Mario 128 tech demo, which made use of 128 separate Mario entities, is actually what ended up becoming Super Mario Galaxy. The weird gravity and terrain inspired Nintendo into looking into making a full game of these kind of playgrounds. In Rolling Gizmo Galaxy, there is a bunch of star bits that appear to be in the shape of a rupee from The Legend of Zelda. The entirety of Rosalina's storybook was written over the course of one night by Yoshiaki Koizumi. Star bits are actually based on real-life Japanese and Portuguese candy called coin pito. Sorry if I also mispronounced that. Coin pitos are actually used as models in other Nintendo properties. Examples include the gratitude crystals from The Legend of Zelda and star fragments from Animal Crossing. The Japanese Imperial Army's military combat ration tins actually contain coin pitos. They're great for their calorie content, but also for their ability to help produce saliva so soldiers can eat dry bread easier. In Bowie based Galaxy, there is actually a planet that happens to be in the shape of a Pokemon. There's a sign hidden behind the door at the beginning of Good Egg Galaxy. It seems to be placed there as a shortcut to be able to have the door be interactable without actually programming the door to be readable. The boss Megaleg is actually a repurposed scrapped boss from The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. 
The philosophy Koizumi had when creating Galaxy was that he wanted players 5 to 95 to be able to enjoy the game. While this is a good thing, it did make the game quite a bit too easy for Koizumi's liking. So they changed Mario's 8 life meter from 64 in Sunshine all the way down to 3 to make the game a bit more challenging. If you collect the max number of star bits, 9,999, all the coconuts in the game will turn into watermelons. Super Mario Galaxy and Super Mario Galaxy 2 are the two highest rated Nintendo games of all time. Super Mario Galaxy 2's original name was actually going to be Super Mario Galaxy More, because at the beginning of development it was going to be a DLC for Mario Galaxy. Super Mario Galaxy is also the only 3D Mario game at this time to be released on the same console as its predecessor. The level spinning, spinning, and spinning is the exact same level as the secret of Rico Harbor Tower from Mario Sunshine. An instructional controls DVD manual came with each copy of Super Mario Galaxy 2 in Japan and Europe, but not in North America. The level Throwback Galaxy is actually the level Womp's Fortress from Super Mario 64. For a while during development, cameos for other Nintendo franchises like Pikmin and Donkey Kong were supposed to make an appearance in Galaxy 2, but they were ultimately rejected by Miyamoto. In Shiverburn Galaxy, there is a creepy image of aliens out in the distance. This image's file in the code is called Hell Valley Sky Tree. What the hell does that even mean? The Ice Mario and Flying Mario power-ups from Super Mario Galaxy don't appear in Galaxy 2, but are actually in the game's files. When you click 777 or 7777 star bits and talk to the captain, he'll say, How lucky! When you collect 9,999 star bits and talk to the captain, he'll say, What happens when you get 9,999 star bits? Something nice, I bet. Super Mario 3D Land is actually not the first portable 3D Mario game. It was actually Super Mario 64 DS. In Super Mario 64 DS, you start the game as Yoshi instead of Mario. Every boss in the game has a unique dialogue depending on which character you are currently playing as. Even though you can't fight Chief Chili as Yoshi, he still has an unused dialogue pertaining to a fight against him. If you alternate between Mario and Yoshi's drawing in the title screen three times, a drawing of Luigi will appear. The original name for Super Mario 64 DS was actually Super Mario 64 times 4. This was because at one point in development, all four characters could be controlled at once. Luigi is unlocked by beating King Boo in Big Boo's Haunt. This is a reference to the Luigi's Mansion games. When Yoshi eats square crates, he makes cubed eggs. In the Korean version of the game, Toad's Rec Room was completely deleted. This was due to Korea's strict gambling laws. Also in the Korean version of the game, there's a yellow exclamation point block at the top of Peach's Castle that will give the player 100 lives. There was a versus mode in 64DS that let you play against your friends and compete in a start collecting minigame. When using download play, the other players would be different colored Yoshis, exclusive to download play. In December 2011, Nintendo held a promotional event at Times Square for the release of Super Mario 3D Land, where people could experience the world of Mario in real life. Super Mario 3D Land has many references to Super Mario Bros. 3, like the Tanuki suit, Boom Boom, and the airships, just to name a few. Unused audio of the Laughing Magikoopa can be found in the game's files. Using the 3DS's microphone, you can actually blow dandelions and collect coins that drop out. PETA created a Flash game called Mario Kills Tanuki, in which Tanuki Mario is chased by a skinless Tanuki. If you wait long enough at the end of level 4-4 and at the beginning of 8-4, a ghost will appear. The level 5-2 is an homage to the 25th anniversary of The Legend of Zelda. It is a top-down level in which you can't stomp on enemies, and if you light all the torches, a secret door will appear and play the iconic Zelda sound effect. If you use binoculars in level 1-3 and look up into the sky, you'll see a UFO. The use of the word land in the title is actually a callback to the original Super Mario Land game, which pioneered portable Mario games. If the player reaches the maximum amount of lives, Super Mario will no longer wear a hat, and instead, Small Mario will be wearing a hat. While it's not possible to fly as Tanuki Mario in-game, in the credits both Mario and Toad seem to be able to fly using Tanuki suits. The Captain Toad level's music in Super Mario 3D World is actually the Toad Brigade theme from Super Mario Galaxy. Once beating Super Mario 3D World, you actually unlock the game Super Luigi Bros as a celebration of the Year of Luigi. The Double Cherry power-up was actually a glitch, but the developers thought it was cool, so they made it into an actual power-up. In the Switch port of Super Mario 3D World, the player actually moves slightly faster and has a cool new dive. 
The four playable characters in Super Mario 3D World are a callback to Super Mario Bros. 2, and have the same abilities as well. Luigi can jump the highest, Peach has a floaty jump, Toad is the fastest but has a short hop, and Mario is the all-rounder. Gold Star 2, also known as Super Galaxy, is a callback to the game Super Mario Galaxy. In it, you'll find the Comet Observatory and Rosalina, who you will unlock after beating the level. The level Mount Must Dash is a callback to Super Mario Kart on the SNES, and even has a remixed version of the Mario Circuit theme playing. The two Mystery House levels that see you fight enemies are called Mystery House Melee and Mystery House Brawl. This, of course, is a callback to Super Smash Bros. Melee and Super Smash Bros. Brawl. When wearing the Goomba mask, all of your player sound effects will be changed to the Goomba sound effects. The collectible stamps found throughout the levels of Super Mario 3D World could actually be used in the Miiverse post on the Wii U. Sadly, the Miiverse is no longer around, and your stamps can only be found in your stamp collection in-game. The Captain Toad puzzle levels were so popular with the developers that they actually made an entire game out of them called Captain Toad's Treasure Tracker. In Super Mario Odyssey, the maximum number of Goombas you can stack is 30. If you look carefully inside the Hint Toads map, you'll actually see a bird's eye view map of Bomb on Battlefield from Super Mario 64. The non capturable NPCs in Super Mario Odyssey wear hats. If you talk to the Toad by the Fountain in Mushroom Kingdom, it'll actually tell you that they were all gifted hats by Peach when she visited the Moon Kingdom. If you go to the Mushroom Kingdom via the painting in Luncheon Kingdom before actually beating the game, you will see that none of the Toads are wearing hats. That's because by that point in the game, Peach hasn't been able to go to the Moon Kingdom to buy all them hats. So, if you were theoretically able to go to the mainland of the Mushroom Kingdom before Peach has had the chance to go to the Moon Kingdom, would you be able to capture a toad? The Luncheon Kingdom's music was made entirely out of kitchen utensils. There's not just one way to enter the Odyssey. You can enter through the rear exhaust pipe or ground pound through the roof hatch. When collecting a moon, Mario will do one of three hand gestures a peace sign, an open hand, or a closed fist. These are all callbacks to Super Mario 64, Sunshine, and Galaxy's star slash shine animations, respectively. It is also a good way to play rock, paper, scissors against Mario. Jumping on the globe right outside of the Odyssey will play a music box cover of Jump Up Superstar. While you can technically get 999 moons, most of them will have to be bought from stores since there's only 880 scattered throughout the game. The Moais in the Sand Kingdom actually hum many classic Mario tunes when captured like the Super Mario NES Overworld theme and the Super Mario World Ending theme. If you leave Mario idle for long enough, he'll fall asleep. When in the sleeping animation, a bird will sometimes sleep on his nose, and the color of that bird will always correspond to that kingdom's moon. Bowser's Fury was released alongside the port of Super Mario 3D World and is the only 3D Mario game not to have a standalone release. The four different cat colors that are found throughout Lake Lap Cat resemble each of the playable character's cat suit colors throughout Super Mario 3D World. Super Mario Sunshine's influence can be found throughout the game. The most noticeable of these is the reintroduction of Shines and, of course, Bowser Jr. Bowser's Fury is the first mainline Mario game to have Bowser Jr. be playable. When wearing a cat suit, the cat's in Lake Lap Cat and nuzzle up against you. The Bowser amiibo can be used to summon Fury Bowser whenever you please. You can actually attack Bowser using the spikes he shoots out. The entirety of Bowser's Fury takes place in one big open level. This makes Lake Lap Cat the biggest level in the entire Mario series. Mario uses the same animation for collecting moons in Odyssey when collecting cat shines in Bowser's Fury. After 100%ing the game, the cat suit gets a texture redesign to match the look of the Giga Cat Bell Power Up. After 100%ing the game, Bowser Jr. wears whiskers and cat ears. Super Mario 3D All Stars was an anniversary compilation of the first three 3D Mario games released on September 18, 2020. It was only available for 194 days and was removed from stores and the Nintendo eShop on March 31st, 2021. No one knows for sure why Nintendo did this. Maybe it was corporate greed, maybe they thought it would make the game more special. <sighs> the world may never know, but in my opinion, I just think Nintendo's dumb. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go check out this other 100 Facts video right here.